Okay, I have no idea where I am, what I'm doing, or anything of the sort. So let's take a look. So... Oh. Ask Titus Hardy to take care of the pigs. Big Green said Dolores Day. Go back to Lena. Keep asking Joyce about reality. Ask us all about her friends. Sync the signs with the Noid. Find a tape of the melody for Egghead. Well, 7.30. So that's... Oh, right. We just woke up. So that gets us a lot of options here. What's inside the fish box? Boots. Come with a perception bonus, interestingly enough. Now, let's ask Joyce about reality for a bit. It's been a little while since I last played this, but it feels like we're on our last day. So let's You're finish back. this off. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. She pats her wet raincoat. I could use a coat like that, and rain is freezing. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic, repels water, almost magically. The company makes them for offshore platform personnel. Very sturdy. He gives the material another pat. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. More questions about reality. What times are these? These are unimportant times, detective. She puts her finger to her lips and points at you. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution, she says. Ha! <laughs> and what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. Would you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central, full swing interspecies warfare. And the apes, were they evil? No, I would say the apes are neutral. She looks at you. Her gaze sharp. Okay, neutral. On the other hand, she turns east to the bombed out buildings lining the waterfront, then shivers slightly. It takes time for apes to change and work. Perhaps that's what happened here. Uh, perhaps what happened here was part of that time and part of that work. We got shot in the head. Those would be the communists, generally speaking. Forty million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Oh, and the anarchists, too. They shot them well. So, so well, one forgets they even exist in... She likes the totality of it. Did the communists and the anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Bef before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. That's a tragedy. Yes, the Red Deluge, the Insulidian Deluge, they call it. Anyone else get shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head, or thrown beneath a horse, or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. She shakes her head. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king, just the king's nephew. The real king ab abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grodd. Smart king. Yes, King Guillaume had a nose for bad PR. Guillaume? He, ha he ran before it. What was the expression went down? Anyway, Gil got out alive and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral, light r mineral rights. She looks up to the sky. Then inland to the crumbling village. The wind blows. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Now the win liberals win it all. They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Remember everyone else got shot in the head, remember? Oh. Okay. We. She's one of them, of course. If everyone got shot, who is there to surrender to? To foreign intervention, the coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you said the liberals already took everything. The Liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The Coalition took the ground. She stomps her rubber-booted foot. The ocean, the laws, the people. We're the Coalition. 
The Coalition of Nations, Grodd, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranye, Oranya, Sir Leclef, the armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least, not in the same manner and volume as others do. There are long-standing provisional rulers of Revishol now. The coalition government. The rulers of Revishol. And also the world. These guys are strong. This is their special administrative region. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took... Uh, same law they took. Hmm. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of the Moral Intern or Moralist International is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. If always picking the option that doesn't commit to anything, then hell yes I am, and also not! An almost endearingly moralist standpoint, she bows. Must be hard to take a moderate approach to head shooting in your line of work. What was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution? She smiles mischievously. Don't answer it. It's a question. Trick question. The revolution began in 02 in the Grada Sola. Though by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? It wasn't who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarath. A particularly virulent prion disease. Prion? Prion. Disease. Which the authorities in Grod proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and overthrew the government. What did Zarath do? It made people overthrow their governments. Wow, really? Of course not. It was a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revishal to Grod? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revishal Commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Why, you and I, officer, she spreads her arms, rain coat flapping in the wind. Our lives in the special administrative region. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Our lives aren't... are not the same. No doubt, but we share the same time and position in the planet's crust. That counts for more than you'd think. What's the special administrative region? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting inter... In, interregnum... That's a word I've never heard before. Of the... Okay. I want to look that up. Uh... I... Hmm. I want to look that word up. Okay, interregnum. Interregnum, yep. A period when normal government is suspended, especially between successful, successive reigns or regi regimes. An interval or pause between two periods of office or other things. Interregnum. Yeah, interregnum. Cool. Ah, uh, I don't know. I. You, the more you learn, I guess. Vocabulary is important. I've been trying to write books for the past more or less as long as I've been doing YouTube because this is my it's my new like kind of creative side hobby while I do other stuff and boy you don't realize how important vocabulary is until you start trying to write creatively anyway a city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the coalition of nations and you of course the citizens militia the clatter of a typewriter keys of clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of a reappropriated silk mill, precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, Officer Elfboy William slams the door of an armored motor carriage. The Special Administrative Region is the third incarnation of Revishol, after the failure of the suzerain in the commune. What happened to the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of inter-isolary inter communication. Telematic milieu, milieu, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revishol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Wait, you're saying it's been like this for 43 years? Time flies. What have we been doing all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war. West of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, 
It's regarded, regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that? The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. All that untaxed income must have fueled the new. And that can only mean one thing. It's when they discovered Disco. Yes, and quantit quantitative easing. It was a market mirage, unfortunately. The 40s dispelled it. An isolar-wide hangover, you might say. So here we are, she curtsies. Welcome to reality, baby. Hey, we got a reality lowdown. And a lot of levels. Uh, let's see. So what side was the Wild Pines group on? They picked the winning side. That's why they're here and others are not. I got lucky. Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out the way it had. Oh, wait. Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out that way had I been in charge. I meant to bet on the king and let the pines to doom. You would have sided, sided with the king? I would have sided with the cannons. If you'd seen the calibers of those things, you might have too, she thinks. Perhaps it's better I was born when I was. Ten of the fourteen Indo tribes got it wrong. Feld, Capri, Tricentennial. So I suppose I would have been in good company. What would you have done differently? Good question, she cranes her neck. What would you have done differently? No, her first. I would have sought a medical solution. Sounds like Sarath drove those people mad. So a quarter of humanity, she calculates, simply lost their minds, and... How would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein? On life with the technology 50 years ago. With some hygiene, modest social care, and perhaps a little research program. Good hygiene, really. A very moderate solution to an extreme problem. It's those ha sorts of half measures that doomed the authorities in Grodd. When they failed to step in, Mazov and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. <laughs> the lieutenant puts down his notes for a moment. Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. She turns to him. And what is your official position, Lieutenant? My position, ma'am. My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Understandable, she nods. So, let's see if I can ask her what she would have done differently. So, who are you in all this? And I asked you, past list detective of the citizens' militia. When in sight, has acute ensil... Encephalopathy. En wow. Encephalopathy. It was pronounced earlier, but I've lost it. Given you. I don't know what I would have done differently. Then you would have died, most likely. Not far from here. Maybe even right here, during the beachhead, defending the coast. The day the coalition took the city. Probably. No, almost certainly. The commune would have forced you. Such was the fate of the undecided. That's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet to come. Anyway, enough of sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? What is acute encephalopathy? It's a neurological disorder caused by lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. What causes it? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. No, oh, it's definitely the drinking. She nods slowly. Uh, let's see. I want to know what you are. Nothing more or less than the de facto law enforcement body of the post-revolutionary Revishol detective. Yes, the lieutenant steps in to make a gesture encompassing you, encompassing you both. We are the Revishol citizens' militia. He's being sarcastic. Are we? Yes, we are. Okay, we've already read this. Let's see, all three are good to know. So, I'm basically going to avoid this subject and ask the next question in this line of inquiry. Really moralist of you. 
The coalition government would applaud you for staying out of politics, and yet, there's nothing basic about your role. Okay, so this is just all stuff that I apparently have read a long time ago. Okay, so... My conceptualization is garbage. I'm going to try and conceptualize, but we need a bonus. We need maximum conceptualization bonuses. I don't know if I have much that really bo gives a benefit to that, but I'll see what I got. We said a little bit. Oh, we're not going to have too much more. I'm just going to go full nerd. Seems to give at least a little bit of a little bit of a bonus. Oh, cavalry boots. Well, we might as well wear them. Uh, let's see. We don't actually have a whole lot of negatives at this point, and we've got a plus two to conceptualization. So that's that's a good sign. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Reality. Nope. A strange coldness comes over you as you look at the world. The waves sway the sloop slowly. That's all. It's on the tip of your tongue, a doubt of sorts. Already in your head, but it's not fully formed yet. You have to wait and return to this later. Once the Yame's Vu thought is complete. Oh. Do I have that one? I got Bow Collector. Derealization. Hmm. Can I have both? Yeah, I'm going to read this. Rivershoal Special Administrative Region, Lake Caillou, the Insulidian Ocean, Coalition Government, Insulidian Mission Command. Name after name, and none of them is familiar. They seem real, but something's wrong. You feel like a kid look looking at stickers on the fridge. Truvant, the Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them. Scratch at the corners. See if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all the thoughts. The one you truly must complete. Okay. So, we'll come back to that later. After we've lost our grip on reality entirely. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. People are mad because I don't look at some of these green dots, but I'm pretty sure I looked at a lot of them. Wedding stone, well worn, and covered in rust. Street sign is legible. Below the graffito. Well, let's keep looking around. There is apparently some stuff for me to interact with. I do appreciate that they give me more things along the way. Oh, the drunks are out early. Yeah, let's, let's go back to town for a bit. I'm going to check this shack out real quick. Just in the off chance somebody's put something inside. Nope. Nothing. I wasn't really expecting too much out here. Uh, oh, no, that's just one of the traps. So it looks like we're pretty much golden. So at this point, it's just tying up extremely loose ends. And then potentially finishing the game. Let's see, we'd re-spooled everything. An ancient fountain doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Yeah, I definitely read that one before. Oh. What's up here? Officer, care to play a game with a lonely old man? The jolliness is gone from Gaston's face. Actually, never mind. It wouldn't be the same. Where's Rene? The prick is gone, he replies, trying to smile. I, I can barely believe it, but he's really gone. He's trying to retain his jolly facade, but the underlying sadness casts a deep shadow over his wrinkled face. 
Gone? Gone where? Gaston sighs and he mumbles more to himself than you. Hell, most likely. He was an absolute con- How did he die, exactly? His angry little heart finally gave out. He sighs. The dock workers found him in the guard booth this morning. Wasn't even supposed to be working for another week. But he just had to prove how tough he is. Wait, did he push himself to prove he can pull his weight and doesn't need handouts? Guess he was about to head home, because when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes. Not the cockatoo uniform. I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. Gaston smiles a sad smile. Now the joke's on him, because he's going to be buried without it. That means the uniform could still be in the guard booth. Something to keep in mind if you really plan to give yourself to Revishol. Do you think our conversation about his job pushed him to go out there? No, he replies quickly. Rene was the most stubborn man in Revishol. Nothing you or I could say could ever push him to do anything. The man was completely immovable. He has doubts. But right now, he just wants to move on and not think about it. Was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute cunt. He turns to the to look at the crater. Even his old army buddies didn't want him around. He was like an old viper. The only people who could stand to be around him were Jeanine, uh, Jeanie and me. Jeanie and me? He pauses. She saw something in him when we were just kids, and his voice trembles. And she never lost sight of it. And I thought, if the most beautiful thing in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. Did you love him? We hated each other our entire lives, so much in fact that he falls silent and looks at you, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. He wipes his eyes with his sleeve. You know what his last words to me were? Some right-wing royalist slogan? In Kiarm's time, we would have been shot without a trial. That's what he said to me. The old man gathers himself and wipes his eyes again. He lived a cunt, and he died a cunt. Let's leave it at that. Here. Something to remember your friends by. Let me see. Gaston takes the photo, hands trembling. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young Rene looks so happy and genie. Eyes blurry with tears. He has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I just... He dries his eyes. Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. That was nice, the lieutenant smiles. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. Probably didn't even know Rene had the photo. I offer my sincere condolences. Yes, the lieutenant nods. We we're both very sorry for your loss. Your, your loss. It is what it is. A part of life, really. He mumbles, only half listening to you. But to no one for 79 years, and then one day they're just gone. I don't know anymore. About anything, really. Slowly shakes his head, but then remembers your presence. But you, you must need something. Oh, that's sad. I mean, it truly is life. There's something down there. The musty smell of a potato cellar in the spring emanates from the air vent. Hmm. Books. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. Man from Helmdahl and the wildfire. Book about pate. Look, you don't understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. It takes willpower to even read the author's name. John Cows from Ig Igaunia. Look about Boidero culture. It promotes freedom and roaming upstream. Look about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Whoa. No. No, they just collect enough data on you that they can figure out what you're going to think anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's talk to... Let's talk to some people. The Copper Nado is back. What do you want? It's an old catatonic lady in the old fish market. On the other side of the bay. She needs help. The big man laughs, nearly spitting out his beer. What's that, Copper? You want us to help little old ladies now? You're local law enforcement, aren't you? The lieutenant looks tightest in the eye. Helping troubled civilians should fall under your jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, we'll sit... Send someone out. Who is it? Wait. It's the pigs, isn't it? Yep, her. 
Pushes his cap. God, poor lady. Don't worry, we'll handle this. I think she's got some family in Quran or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. Hey, Eugene interjects. Wasn't Everett's B team looking for her the other day? Said something about her, I don't know, find so finding something? Yeah, I think you're right, Jean. Titus gives you a beer salute and turns to you. Do you have something yours, big? Whatever you do, do not admit to these punks you lost your gun. You'll suffer if you do. Nope, she didn't have anything of mine. No? Well, whatever then, copper. Titus chugs his beer down and wipes his mouth. No, they totally said what it was. Was it, uh... He's still thinking over it over in the corner. Anyone remember? Tattooed man scratches his head with his knuckles. I don't remember. I was effing drunk. Let me know if you find out back there, the man says, turning to you. Now, anything else you want to help me with? What's her name? Her real name. Takes off his cap and scratches his head. Auntie Laplante. Laplante, maybe? We always called her something Laplante. Marianne, amigo. He says, pouring himself another drink. Marianne Laplante. The big guy nods, drinking his toast. Anything else you want to know? Who was she? Was? Like before? Just an old lady. Her kids moved away years ago. Never come to visit. Never took her calls. She gets out every now and then. He swirls his beer. She did write by lots of us when we were kids. Always was a little off, but still. Us kids? That must have been ages ago. She was better then. The children kept her together. How'd she get like this? Been wanting to be a cop, you mean? Well, she... He froze his brow in thought. Shit, I don't actually know. Anyone know why she started acting like a pig? No effing clue, the tattooed man shouts. It's gotta be crazy. Who'd want to be a pig? I can't help but feel partially responsible for the unhealthy culture the poor woman latched onto. I'm sorry. Tattooed mesk sinks into his seat, unsure how to respond. Yeah, you should be. Big man shrugs. Whatever, cop. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of our own. Where'd she get all her cop gear? Dunno, Titus says, shrugging. He lives by the water. Shit washes up all the time on the beach. These paraphernalia doesn't just wash up on the coast, people. It's not like we dump it at night. She bought it, collected it. Station 41. A man carries a crate of rusted, unused badges. I think these would net us something at the annual auction. A balding detective drags a comb futilely across his head. Shit, who'd want those? Just dump them in the river. Thanks for helping out on this one, Titus. No problemo, cop man. We take care of our mentally ill here in Martinez. Ain't that right, boys? Sure enough, Eugene raises his glass and toast. We're the real heroes in the streets. Alright, so I think that's done. So, got to go back to Lean and the Whirling, and then Noid and find... Yeah. Not much left. Oh, her husband's not here. Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. The elderly woman smiles up at you, hopefully. I restocked the empty tra trap. Where's Morel? Thank you for doing that, dear. She manages a smile for you. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebulence has left her. Morel isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. She looks down at her hands. I'm afraid, his re I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Probably for the best. It's awfully cold out there in the reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You have had to drudge through them so many times. Such is fieldwork. Young person's game, as they say. Voice is shaky. What's going on here? So, who's going to check the traps? Well, we'll eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out. Perhaps Lieutenant stares at his shoe caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. Once more into the breach, then. Take it on with undue optimism. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. You know what's wrong? You seem different. Different how? The half-moons of her glasses reflect you as she looks up at you. Answering a question with a question, for example. Defensive isn't usually her style. You're on the back foot. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. You're in doubt about what? 
It's a strange feeling. She looks down, biting her lower lip. I haven't really told this to anyone, but you are a police officer. When a police officer asks, you must answer. You ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just a story or a dream? Hunching her shoulders now. She seems even smaller than she is, like a sad young girl. Seeing the Enslidian Phasmid is just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Morel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. Morel's so proud of it, he always tells everyone. Terrible sting in the heart. Regret. You seem to really believe it happened. Doesn't that count for something? No, sweetie. She shakes her head. There's more to it than that. Morel has, was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence that I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists that for years his belief made me believe too. But now we're both getting old and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. She shakes her head, unable to meet your eyes. But what if I was just wrong? I, I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't say anything. Suggestion low. That's really bad. How many skill points am I loaded up on? Freaking one. Eh... To hell with this. I still believe you saw the Phasmid. A true believer, she looks out the window. Sometimes I see it too. The memory of it. I was there. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Rising, unfolding from the reeds in a so hot summer's day like a benevolent god. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever. I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Are you sure you don't need help getting to Gary's? Oh no, thank you. I can get there on my own. The old thing's gas-powered. She taps the chair. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. You do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? Oh, sweetie. She looks at you worried. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. I have your address, just in case there's news. Okay, it's... 1113 Tabernacle Road, Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. It's been a pleasure, ma'am. Likewise, sweetie. She flicks the switch on her chair, and the engine turns on with a whir. Thank you for everything, truly. Even if it turned out to be a... The sentence remains unfinished. Waste of time? A dream. A fool's hope. S say her lips moving in silence. Like that, she drives off. That was loud. The gas engine putters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, the cold coastal wind blows. We should go, too. Somewhere out there, a kilometer to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness to ask the wind once more. Because at this point, I have pretty much everything done. I have the reel of magnetic tape. I have these speakers for some reason. Some of these are more or less useful than others. Uh, there's karaoke. Chopping block. Tomatoes are so thinly sliced, you can see right through them. Again, I can't believe. Well, he'll probably reveal himself at the end of the game as kind of a performance review of everything that I did. So I guess it's time to go find Ruby. I'm really curious how much there is after this. Probably not too much. One way or another, I think we're at a good stopping point. These episodes are going to get short for a little while because I am going to be busy for the next couple of days. But if we're lucky, maybe I'll just beat it. I don't really know.